that the futility of resistance against the advancements in technology it's part it's another part of why we came here for this earthly experience mm -hmm. i think ultimately it's technology will be a direct reflection of our divinity and we'll see that consciously i mean it is mm -hmm. that in a subconscious way but i think ultimately it's it's raising to this point where we're face to face with ourselves. We'll realize we are the creators. We are all the creator goddesses mm -hmm. and gods of yeah. our existence, which is the truth already, but we don't really yeah. believe it. And we're not gonna really believe it until we see it reflected in a certain way and on a mass level. You know, I think- Yeah, like when you could start seeing the tide. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. pretty interesting, the time we're living in right now. It, it is. I mean, think about the power that we all have. We all have complete, power over the joy we create or don't create mm. in our lives. Now, what we don't have power over is the circumstances that seemingly come to us. And I don't believe that, oh, if you think good thoughts, only good things mm. will come to you. That's bullshit. Like, yeah. that, it's, it's not realistic and it, it's not part of the human experience. You know, our, our experience, the reason we come to this place is to reconcile with the messiness of it. It's not about the Pollyanna story of, you know, no. the goal is to have perfection and nothing yeah. bad happening. You know, that's bad it, shit is part of life. Life is yeah. inevitably leading to death. <laughs> I love what you said about reconciling the messiness. Yeah. Um, it's not a quote, it's a lyric. And there's a crack in everything and that's how the light gets in by Leonard Cohen. And yeah. then, you know, and then the idea of the that Japanese art where, you know, the thing Things are broken yes. and then they glue it back together with the I don't know what it's exactly. called, but you know what I'm talking yes, about. Yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. And 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 really showing that the imperfection isn't this perfect thing flawed. It's a new thing. It's it actually is, this yeah. new vase that has this line down the middle that was that was put back together and, and that's a whole other story. You know, we're always telling all these stories. That's what we do. We gather mm -hmm. stories as we live our lives and as we ingest them, we have total creative dominion of how we spend those narratives, how we spend those stories, how we take what comes to us and filter it through our best possible potential. So, uh, you know, taking something uh, that's the, like a, an election that brings out a bunch of people that feel empowered to spread divisiveness and hatred and lies. We take that in and take it personally, like, how dare they? This is horrible. But the opportunity there is to empower ourselves with a greater sense of purpose to be a conduit of light and truth and really evaluate and I love the word evaluate because I think we're in a, a time of reflection of our values. I don't know. And we're really called to to deeply examine and do all the re's that we do with retrogrades, you know, reevaluate, mm -hmm. reexamine, reassess. What are what are the things we value? And are we living in a way that's in alignment with those value systems? And and yeah. if we are reinforce those systems because they're doing the right thing and if something feels a little mm. weird or off then we look at that and redirect maybe, redirect <laughs> always what at our base root you know is is our foundation of who how we would self-describe in our highest potential i want to be a person mm -hmm. of integrity i want to be a person of truth and i want to yeah. be like, and are we are we embodying that? And I think it doesn't hurt to always examine those things because yeah. when you find out, yeah, I'm actually I'm, I'm living a life where I'm kind of doing what what I feel is right. I'm following a path I feel called for. I'm surrounding myself with people that 
I think are, are really solid and that I want to champion and that champion me. And I, I mean, if you're, if you're check, 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 that's cool. But we always, I think, get served by checking in with ourselves and transports us to a different way of, if, of thinking. And it's impossible to be linear and not mm -hmm. present if you're really connecting in the moment of right. your creation, whatever that creation is. I think what it leads me back to was the, the, the thing that was broken and put back together is not like, oh, well, let me make it like it was before. It's a new thing in and of itself. Exactly. Exactly. And, and without that break, it wouldn't be a new thing. I mean, our, our scars and and our, our growing, whatever manifests in whatever form as a result of growing pains, whether you have an accident and you now have a scar where you were healed or whatever, you know, we're taught to sort of see scars and age and especially in women and this has to do with patriarchy's invisible design and and not so invisible design but but the aging growing pains and the, and the result of and the imperfection that can be visible as a result from those things are that's that's to be championed and really looked at and examined and embraced and we're taught to kind of sweep those things under the rug uh, to, to stay the same to not get older to not get to have your body change from when you're 14 years old you know whatever the, the, the like really insidious um the, the thing that's yeah. within 